I've spent almost a, over a thousand days in the hospital. I've been told 13 times that I most likely would not make it through the night. I have over 13 different diseases. I have had 75 to 85 different surgeries and procedures. And I have countless scars all over my body, but no one can see it because I look so normal on the outside. My name is Rebecca Taylor. Hear my story. Before I was seven, my life was perfect. I had two amazing parents and two younger brothers, and we just had the perfect American dream life. We had um, all had pretty much perfect health. My mom was pregnant with my baby sister. We were just in the perfect situation, living the dream. And when I was seven, one night I had terrible pain. I couldn't eat anything, I couldn't sleep, and I could barely breathe with the pain. And my grandmother was with me and she took me to the ER with my mom and um, they told me that I had pancreatitis at the hospital. And they also told me that they didn't have any way to treat me. And most of them told us it was impossible for a girl who's seven years old to get what they called the old man's disease. So they shipped me off as fast as they could to a hospital in Houston where I stayed for another few months by more doctors who didn't know what to do. When I think of the word childhood, I mainly think of a hospital room. The nurses became like my family. The doctors became like my second fathers, and no one knew what to do with me. On an average day, I take around 35 different pills just to keep me alive. I'm missing five organs since the transplant, including my pancreas, which is considered a vital organ. I, whenever I wake up in the morning, I'm so weak I can barely sit up, but I force myself to get up and I walk and I don't fight, but I walk. People keep telling me to keep fighting, but it's much easier if you just walk because you can take it one step at a time. All those warnings that you see at the hospitals that are tell pregnant women to stay away and my mom was pregnant with Annabelle at the time that I was in the hospital. And I'm sorry, I guess for years, she passed away right after her birth from an infection. And I guess for years I always felt guilty that it was my fault. <laughs> because my mom had to choose between her two daughters. And which, was she gonna stay with the one who was dying or the one who was supposed to live? And I'm standing here today and she's not. I loved her more than words could say, even though I never got to see her. My mom went to the hospital and she never came back. Each day I still, every night I can't go to sleep until I put on a necklace with her initials. And I just know that one day I'm gonna meet her again and I'm just gonna run and give her the biggest hug. I realize now that there's nothing I could have done, but I still miss her every day. If there's a God out there who can, who died on a cross to save a broken body like mine, then that's the God that I want to follow. When I was too weak to stand, I leaned on him. When I was too weak to walk, he carried me. I couldn't do any of this without him. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. So after transplant, I was offered to make a wish and they said, what do you want? You can go anywhere, do anything. And I asked them if I could start a pancreas center to help kids from all over the world so that they could come in and receive a type of treatment and that we could promote research and that hopefully one day have a cure for pancreatitis and it offers scholarships for families who can't pay to have their to fly in and take care of their child or who can't pay for all the medical expenses and it's called Rebecca's Wish and we've already helped so many people it, it just makes me smile every time I think about it if I could encourage you in some way I'd like to tell you to keep walking Everybody says to keep fighting, but if you walk, you can take it one day at a time, 
and focus on all that's around you while you're walking. Um, don't let the labels define you. You are not a disabled person. You are a person with disabilities who may be hurting right now, but let it be a part of you. And don't forget that God always loves you no matter what. He is always good.